Hello and welcome to today's tutorial on DIPS and S-Wedge. S-Wedge is rock science's analysis tool for evaluating geometry and the stability of surface wedges in rock slopes. This software is often used with DIPS, a stereographic projection program for the analysis and presentation of orientation-based data. In this tutorial, we'll be using both of these programs, importing joint data from DIPS into S-Wedge and performing a slope stability analysis. So, if you're ready to get started, open up both these programs and follow along. For this tutorial, we'll be analyzing the list of joint planes defined by DIP and DIP direction. The DIPS file we're looking at is included in the S-Wedge tutorial folder and is called Tutorial 3 Combinations Analysis. The DIPS program is a great tool for performing an initial analysis of the data. If we click on the vector preset and select Intersections, we can already see the number of intersections created by these planes. In this case, it's 63,000. We can then take this further and perform a kinematic analysis by clicking on the icon in the toolbar. Select the option for wedge sliding and change the slope dip and dip direction to 65 and 180 respectively, and the friction angle to 25 to match the settings we'll use in the S-Wedge analysis. Just looking at this, we can see the percent of critical intersections is 21%. A number this high is worth analyzing further in the S-Wedge program. S-Wedge is a limit equilibrium program. When conducting a combinations analysis similar to DIPS, it finds all the possible joint combinations. What S-Wedge does differently, though, is it considers whether these joint planes form a valid wedge with the slope and upper slope planes using block theory. If valid, it determines the deriving and resisting forces acting on the wedge to determine the factor of safety for this combination. S-Wedge also gives the users options to remediate critical sliding wedges by using supports. To begin our S-Wedge analysis, open up the S-Wedge program. When you start the program, a default model is automatically created. Whenever a new file is created, the default input data forms a valid slope geometry. Let's start by specifying a combinations analysis in the Project Settings dialog. To open the dialog, select Analysis, Project Settings in the menu, or click on the Project Settings icon in the toolbar. In the General tab, select Combinations as your analysis type. Select Metric, stress as MPA for units. Then click OK to close the dialog. Now let's define the slope and joint properties in the Input Data dialog. Go to the Analysis menu and select Input Data, or click on the Input Data icon in the toolbar. Select the Slope tab and set the Dip as 65, Dip Direction as 180, and the Height as 20 for the slope. For the upper face, set Dip to 0 and Dip Direction to 180. Since the Dip Direction is the same for the slope, you could also check the Use Slope Dip Direction checkbox. Now select the Joints tab. Click the Import from Dips button. We'll be importing the same file we previously looked at in Dips. Go to the Examples Tutorial folder in your S-Wedge installation folder and open the Tutorial 3 Combinations file. In the Dip Data Import Options dialog, keep the defaults and click OK. If you did not have DIPS, you could also copy and paste the orientation data directly from Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet program, or manually define the joint sets by typing the data into the Joint Planes grid. In the Joints tab under Joint Strength, Change the shear strength model to Barton Bandis. Set JRC equals 7, JCS equals 50, and residual friction angle is 25. Click OK to save your changes and compute the combinations. After the analysis is complete, computation of all the possible combinations of the joint planes will occur. We can see that the factor of safety for the minimum factor safety wedge is 0.6. If we look at the wedge information panel, we can also see other important information from the combination analysis. Like we saw in DIPS, the total number of combinations is 63,000. Unlike in DIPS though, the number of valid combinations is also shown, since not all combinations form a wedge. 
of these valid wedges, the number of combinations that produce a wedge that is unstable and the number of combinations that produce a stable wedge are also displayed. The wedged combination with the minimum factor of safety of 0.6 is the wedge formed by joints with dip dip directions of 55/204 and 60/178. The weight for this wedge is 16.76. Now let's plot the distribution of the factor of safety versus the wedge weight for all the combinations by opening up the scatter plot parameters dialog. You can do this by selecting Statistics, Plot Scatter in the menu, or clicking on the icon in the toolbar. Make sure the x-axis dataset is set to Safety Factor, and the y-axis dataset is set to Wedge Weight. Now click OK. It's obvious from this figure that some of the combinations produce huge wedges. To see the wedge corresponding to any set of data points in the graph, we can double-click the data point. For this example, we'll double-click the data point furthest in the upper right. This is the point with a factor of safety of 100 and a wedge weight of around 344,000. The wedge with the maximum weight has a persistence and maximum trace length of over 15 kilometers. Clearly, there is no chance a wedge could exist with a joint plane continuity of this magnitude. Nor is there a wedge of this size with a weight of over 344,000 possible. Thus, we need to limit the size of the wedges that are formed since certain combinations have an unrealistic size and extension. S-Wedge provides a number of methods for limiting the size of the wedges that are formed in the analysis. To begin, reopen the input data dialog. In the Slope tab, select the Slope Length checkbox and enter 30. The slope length is in the same direction as the strike of the slope. Defining the slope length is just one method of limiting the size of the wedges that are formed. Under Upper Face, check the box for Bench Width and set a width of 10. The bench width or upper face is the extent of the upper face measured perpendicular to the slope crest. This distance is measured in the horizontal plane and not in the plane of the upper face if it is dipping at an angle greater than zero. Select the minimum wedge size checkbox and set the weight as 0.001. This option is useful for filtering out very small insignificant sliver shaped wedges that may be formed. Now click OK to save your changes and compute the combinations. When S-Wedge uses options such as slope length and bench width to limit the wedge sizes, wedges that exceed these limits are scaled down so that they fit the slope dimensions. It should be noted that the wedges are not removed from the analysis and set as invalid. They are simply resized so that they fit the dimensions of the slope. In this way, the program always tries to determine a wedge for a given set of joint orientations. After computation, we can see that the factor of safety of the minimum factor of safety wedge has changed to 0.723. If you look at the maximum trace length of the unlimited minimum factor of safety, you'll see that it has also changed from its previous value of 70 meters. 70 meters is considerably larger than the slope length of 30 meters and the bench width of 10 meters used to limit the wedge size. As a result, the unlimited wedge has been scaled down in size, which has the effect of lowering its weight and increasing its factor of safety. The number of valid, invalid, and failed wedges has also changed, but not by much. This is because even with the scaling that exceed the slope dimensions, some wedges cannot be scaled to fit inside the slope. Now we'll go back to the scatter plot we created earlier in this tutorial. Click the Scatter Plot tab. Notice that there are no longer the huge wedges that existed before. Another way of limiting wedge size is by using joint persistence, which is the maximum length of a joint in plane, or the trace length information. This is done in the Scale Wedge dialog. To access this, select Scale Wedge in the Analysis menu. Under Maximum Persistence, select both the Joint 1 and Joint 2 checkboxes and enter scaling values of 10 meters for both. Then click OK. To see both the wedge view and the scatter plot view at the same time, we can tile the windows using the Window Tile Horizontally option in the menu. Double click in the perspective view of the wedge to expand it. We can see that using persistence has increased the factor of safety to 0.8. The weight of the wedges has decreased considerably. The size of the minimum factor of safety wedge is no longer the maximum size wedge that can fit inside the slope. 
It does not extend to the full height, length, or width of the slope, and has been scaled down to meet the persistence condition. If you double-click a few data points in the scatter plot, you notice that the persistent value for each of these wedges does not exceed the 10 meters that you defined. Select View Show Minimum Factor Safety Wedge to again show the wedge with a minimum factor of safety. To get an idea of the relative distribution of failed to stable combinations, we can plot a histogram of factor of safety again using the Histogram Plot Parameters dialog. Go to the Statistics menu and select Plot Histogram. Leave the data type as Safety Factor and click OK. The red bar on the left side of the plot represents the unstable wedges with a factor of safety of less than 1. The bar at the far right of the plot represents all wedges with a factor of safety greater than or equal to 100. S-Wedge truncates the factor of safety at 100, so that all wedges with a factor of safety of greater than 100 are given a factor of safety of 100. Now let's change the chart properties to look at a distribution of factor of safety between 0 and 20. Right-click inside the histogram and select Chart Properties. In the Axes section, set the horizontal minimum to 0 and the horizontal maximum to 20. Then click Close and you'll see the changes. Another tool for visualizing the results is the StereoNet view. In the StereoNet view, you can plot all the poles of the joint planes, as well as all the valid lines of intersections. You also have the option of highlighting the poles and lines of intersections that represent unstable wedges. To open the StereoNet view, select Analysis, StereoNet in the menu, or click on the icon in the toolbar. By default, all the 356 poles are drawn along with the great circles representing the slope, upper face, and the currently set joint 1 and joint 2 that are used to plot the 3D wedge view. Now let's plot the line with intersections and the failed wedges. Right-click in the view and turn off the Show Planes option, then turn on the Show Intersections. Another aspect of combinations analysis is the addition of support to guarantee that all possible wedge combinations will have a factor of safety of above a certain value. For example, let's look at what the bolt force is required to ensure that no wedge has a factor of safety of less than 1.2. We'll assume that the bolt is horizontal and trending to the north, which is directly into the slope face. To do that, let's go back to the wedge view. We first need to set up the bolt properties. Select Support, Bolt Properties in the menu, and a dialog will appear. Select Bolt Property 1, Type equals Simple Bolt Force, Bolt Model equals Active, and the force is 0 0.05. Then click OK. Next, we'll add the bolt. Select Support, then Add Spot Bolt in the menu. Move your mouse over the wedge view so that the cursor is over the wedge on the slope face. When the cursor changes, click to open the Add Spot Bolt dialog. Keep the orientation as Trend Plunge, set Plunge to 0, then click OK. A computation of all the wedge combinations occurs. Each wedge includes a bolt of bolt property 1 with a trend slash plunge of 0 slash 0. After computation, we see that the minimum factor of safety wedge has once again changed, and that the minimum factor of safety is 1.02. If we want a factor of safety that is no lower than 1.2, we need to increase the bolt force in the Bolt Properties dialog. Go back to the Bolt Properties dialog, then change the force to 0.07 and click OK. The factor of safety is now 1.1. Reopen the dialog again and set the force to 0.09. After computation of all the combinations, the minimum factor of safety wedge has a factor of safety of 1.2. Thus, a bolt with a force of 0.09 and a trend plunge of 0/0 ensures all wedge combinations have a factor of safety of at least 1.2. You can verify this by looking at the scatter plot. Thanks for following along with this tutorial on DIPS and S-Wedge. We hope you learned some useful skills for creating and analyzing your own surface wedge models. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can check out our many playlists on the Rock Science YouTube channel. 
and make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media to get the latest rock science updates. Thanks for watching.